Okay, good morning and welcome back to Tupelo TV. Thank you for joining The Average Golfer at a very cold uh, and snowy four golf Chester. I'll spin the camera around shortly. The snow is clearing, but I've got a wind chill of minus 10 blowing in here. So I'm gonna make this intro very quick and get in some golf balls. I'm on a very selfish set of videos right now because you're helping me set up my bag for 2018. And uh, you'll know I'm going through a driver dilemma at the moment, deciding on what I'm gonna do with that for 2018. Well, I'm gonna start now with a three wood, but hopefully we can all learn something from people who are in similar positions as me. Um, I've got the M1 from three seasons ago now. Um, I had this in the bag quite a while. Consistent performing club. I'm the kind of person who likes to play three wood off the tee. I generally get good numbers with a three wood. A bit better control, shorter shaft. And it's like I said, it's a favoured club of mine. However, a week or so ago, I hit the Callaway Rogue three wood. I didn't put that video out. I didn't get to complete that video in terms of um, putting out to uh, editing it. So I thought, right, I'm gonna pitch them up into a head-to-head -head and see how they, they perform on this day, this morning swing, how do they perform? Because I really thought it was a standout product and one of the numbers I was achieving, I thought, wow, this is, this is another one that I'd potentially look to make a swap from. It's gonna be an expensive exercise, don't get me wrong, but um, I like it. Let's see how it performs, like I said, on a very cold and miserable day. I need to warm up, there's no doubt about that. Not expecting to sw swing speeds to be flying right now, but, uh, We'll move camera, I'll hit some golf balls, and I'll see if there's any persuasion that this could be a potential move from my M1 into the Callaway Road for the 2018 season. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so before we go too much further, let's talk about difference in terms of aesthetics. And they are quite a bit different. This is the old M1, don't forget, with the thick white line. They've changed that slightly in the newer versions with a thinner silver stripe. They both have this carbon high gloss crown um, and this sort of pattern that you see in the back end of both clubs. In all honesty, visually, I like the look of both clubs. I've never um, swayed one way or the other. I like the tailor-made um, look and I also do like the Callaway. One thing I like about this Callaway in terms of where it's looking from from above, and I'll see that in terms of the face, is it's got a sort of, it's a shallower face. And when I put them uh, sort of side by side, the height of the face on the Callaway is certainly uh, lower. And it sits sort of flatter and more elongated. And I'll show you that camera view from the top as what I'm looking at now. I always like the Callaway Chevron in terms of the, um, the sort of marking, clearly marking the centre of the club where you're liking to line the ball up from. You see a bit more face with the, oddly enough, with the kind of white stripe. I think it sits out the face more on the, um, on the tailor-made product. But again, it's all about personal preference at address. People already know I'm not fond of the turquoise looking shaft. It reminds me of a, a shaft that you'd see in ladies clubs. But other than that, I think, like I said, most, both clubs are very appealing. I'm going to play these balls from a tee peg because I like, again, I'm testing it from me considering playing off of a tee but I would also be interested to take these out on the fairway because once again sat behind the ball the sort of slimmer more slimline version of the Callaway is more appealing to me on the eye but again once again very much a personal thing anyway I can't talk for much more longer I'm, I'm, uh, I'm struggling as it is as you can tell I'm going to get in some golf balls I'm going to start off with giving this Callaway Rogue a bit of a bash So small tee peg kind of thing that, like I said, it's just, um, I don't know, what's that? Five mil tee peg, nothing more than that, which is what I'd tee up with. We're playing a tailor-made TP5s with both clubs. Now I've got a different camera angle here and uh, let's just hope I don't hit it. Don't curse things, and Yeah, imagine swing speed might be down a little today.
Okay, so that's golf balls hit. I'm not going to sit back down. I'm going to grab the numbers off my phone in a minute because uh, believe me, it's too cold to sit down. Uh, so I'll keep on a slight move here. Um, first things to note, just I just said to someone actually about the numbers. How did it were asking me how did it get on? It works here. And I said straight away, I don't really need to see the numbers. You can see once again, ball flight, where that ball is carrying to. And more interestingly enough on this particular test, and don't forget, it's only a very small set of uh, shots. So always um, subjective, I suppose. Um, but straight away, there's a lot more consistency coming out of the Rogue in terms of where I was at least hitting the ball. The other big thing I would say notable, which I preferred as well, but again, it's a personal thing, is the sound which for me resonates in what I would call feel. Um, love the sound out of the Rogue. Um, a bit more, let's see the difference, this was a softer feel, whereas this was a much more uh, sort of powerful, um, louder noise that came off of the M1. And like I said, I love the softer feel and the softer noise, in fact, of the Rogue. So straight away, I'm liking this club anyway, and that's why I've pitched it into the head-to-head, -head, because like I said, it's a very uh, selfish video. Um, but I really want to see in numbers what it did in terms of performance. So enough waffle, let's get in and see if my eyes at least um, agreed with what comes out in numbers. So here we go, numbers on screen now. Okay, so let's start off with the numbers um, of the my, my own club, the M1. Um, Decent club head speed, 93.9, and we managed to get, well, I actually swung it slightly slower, interestingly enough, with the three wood, uh, with the Rogue three wood. Uh, but 93.9, um, club ball speed, 134.7, spinning at 3.3, carry 2.4. The numbers all fairly consistent as well. Uh, second shot wasn't too good, carried at 194, and again, high spinning, um, and I would imagine uh, higher launch in which it was. Um, overall distance 225 launching at 11.6 kind of numbers don't forget I don't think it's the best I've ever hit the ball this morning I was striking the ball reasonably well it is a little bit uh, cold as I said in here and rhythm not being its best so maybe a little bit erratic but more than happy and with the numbers that I got there and uh, as I said now going into these rogue numbers which are coming up on screen for you now the interesting thing straight away and I think a big telltale sign of the difference in technology and club heads and club faces is once again 92 club head speed so we're uh, what are we full mile almost two mile an hour slower in swing speed 137 ball speed so three mile an hour faster in terms of ball speed straight away that's a, an impressive and telltale sign for me Spinning again, lower spinning, 2.6. Launching higher, lower spinning, longer carry. These are all the things that I want to see and all the things that I do see from uh, the clubs that have been coming out of late. I keep sending the same old messages about there is definitely, I don't say club technologies move forward year after year after year, but what I've certainly seen in this last six to eight months is the product's been released. There is noticeable visible differences out there into the range and then in numbers I see them with my kind of as I keep saying erratic and variable swing and the variable positions that I might hit it across the club face so once again I say the same message if you're consistently finding the bang center of a club between the M1 and the Rogue maybe there wouldn't be a great deal of difference but when you've got a strike pattern like mine and maybe like yours which might be right across this club face then the Rogue, or in this case, and in other cases, um, the, the forgiveness is certainly assisting with off-center strikes. That's the biggest thing I'm finding. And once again, look at this dispersion that I'll throw up now. You can see once again where them balls are going. And there is a lot, lot tighter dispersion on the Rogue as well. And like I said, it may well be there's a couple of clubs in the mix for me because I'm a big fan uh, of the M4. Didn't get on with the M3 as much in terms of the fairway. Um, that's maybe another head-to-head -head I'll have a look at on my own little personal um, mission to find a new three wood but anyway that's me done i'm going to go inside for a little while and warm my hands up before i attempt video number two thanks for watching thumbs up if you like that one subscribe if you don't already and as ever stick some sensible comments down below and i will make sure i make every effort to get uh, back with a reply